What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about a topic that has perplexed me for some time and that is the relationship of the first cone and where it should be in representation to a booster housing inside of a suppressor. And why I bring this up is, well, the Form 1 community, right? If you get on forums or um, even myself in general, uh, has always kind of originally at least leaned towards a 250 thou gap between the first cone and the booster housing. So that's going to look something like this. So let's pretend for a second this was the end of our booster housing right here. Eh, we'll use it a little bit wider. So let's pretend this is the end of our booster housing right here. Well, this gap right here between the first cone and the tip of that booster housing is what we are talking about today. So in this picture, we're looking at like a 150 thou gap, which has always been what I've kind of used. Now, many people have used a 250 gap, and I always just kind of found that I liked the 150 more. Now, I never personally have built anything with a gap smaller than that, so I've never really been able to attest if there's any benefit to going any closer. What kind of benefit might there be? Well, we can, of course, by bringing this gap forward, possibly make the chamber here a little bit smaller, which could potentially limit first round pop a little bit. We're also going to have a little bit narrower area, which would possibly force pressure to be a little bit higher and maybe utilize this uh, little areas a little bit better, possibly. Just idle speculation here. One of the reasons I never personally thought to go any further or closer than that is that it could increase back pressure, which could increase possibly sound, which could increase stuff blowing back in your face. But I'm at a point now where I want to find out the answer to this for myself. So after many months and lots of hard work and a couple different uh, hoops I've had to jump through, of course, always make sure you're following the laws and such, I'm finally in a position where I can figure this out and try this for myself by doing one of two things. Having one that is set up this way and then one that has a buried tip. So unfortunately there's not a lot of examples on the internet that we can really look at. Uh, so you're just going to kind of have to go off of my own trust from things I've seen from other people's stuff. But um, I do have this one example here and this is the Silent Tracoa Omega. Actually, it's a night. Omega K. It's a shorter version, but it doesn't really matter. And you can see that they've got a very similar cone profile than what I am using, though not quite the same. It's more. It actually has more in common with just a standard radial, but um, we're still kind of doing the same thing. But you'll notice that they slightly bury the tip here. So that is one company that is doing this. That I think we can all agreeably say. Uh, has a decent handle on what they're doing. Now, this image is going to be a little bit harder to see with it zoomed in as it gets a little bit funny. But here we have an Osprey. Now, this is a very different type of can construction, right? It's a monocore. You'll see here the booster ends right here, and our first cone is right there. So in this particular example, we have something more in line with what is kind of traditionally recommended uh, by most people which is a gap of, you know, somewhere in that quarter of an inch range. So it does appear that there is even some divide between some of the companies. And in this case, this is the exact same company. And here I did manage to find just a little bit clearer view of this. So here we've got our booster, right? And the silver part is our piston. And then we've got the exit of our gas right there. And then you can clearly see we have a decent gap here between that excellent event and our first cone. Now, just because 250 has been kind of common does not mean that there are other people who might have gone with even larger gaps. Here we have an example of our piston right here. And I don't know the exact size of this, but you can see that the 
tip of this first K baffle has probably somewhere around, I would guess this is about a one, why did that not change? Um, I would guess this is somewhere around one inch here uh, of a gap. So again, there is some breakup. Here we have the CGS Mod 9, arguably one of the better, if not one of the best, one of the probably top two to four um, nine millimeter suppressors out there. And actually just saying that out loud made me think that this doesn't necessarily just apply to nine millimeter. This applies to pistol cans in general here, what we're what we're talking about. But you'll notice that they were using a curved pocket cone, very similar to what um, I've got going on here. And unfortunately, I don't have any images right now of the relationship of the booster tip. Arguably, I know for a fact that the tip of the first cone is actually buried inside the booster tip by a about a tenth to a tenth and a half of an inch, so about 150 thou. You'll also notice that the piston on the CGS is very different, and that is going to be a topic for another video, but just kind of keep that one in mind in your head. And arguably right there with the Mod 9 in a really good can, uh, in probably that top three to four range, is the Rugged Obsidian as well. Now this I did have a picture, but I just can't find it. I don't know if I deleted it or what. And unfortunately, I was not able to get another one. But um, And at some point, I will actually... I have both of these cans on hold on Form 4, just waiting for the stamps to get approved. But we'll take deeper looks at them. But anyway, uh, same kind of deal. The tip of this first cone is buried inside this booster about, a, again, about 150 thou of depth. So if you look at this booster here, uh, it uses just kind of a normal silencer co pattern booster. Um, got nice big ports on the sides and such. But anyway, uh, we do have kind of that same sort of construction. So basically my plans are to take both styles and test it. So here I've went ahead and I've illustrated my echomachine.net booster housings. And they are sitting in these adapters here to make them fit the size tubing I'm using. Which when you put these two pieces together then looks like this piece here. And when you stick all that inside of a tube, let's try to move this over. You've got this. So this is going to be what I'm calling can number one or standard or um, regular whatever word you want to use to kind of denote it uh, I don't really have anything too clever thought up but we're basically looking at a pocket curved cone with a gap here between the cone and the tip of the booster of roughly a hundred and fifty thousandths of an inch uh, we do have a little bit of gap between the booster housing and the tube wall but not too much and then we're going to be comparing that to basically the exact same thing. Same number of cones, same overall length and whatnot. Um, obviously, moving the cone forward has also meant changing the distal chamber a little bit. So that is going to be the only variable that unfortunately I could not control. Um, but I think it's completely fine. Um, you can't really get more out of... Uh, like if we had like no distal chamber at all and then went to like a big distal... Yes, that would have probably a, a good sized measurable effect. But in this case, we're going from already a, 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 a proper size distal to just a touch more. So it's not really going to be an issue, but it is something, unfortunately, that we can't control. Now, of course, we can go with a shorter tube, but now our exit event is closer to the shooter. And that would actually more than likely have a larger negative effect uh, in validating the test more. So I made sure to build both as close to the same overall length as possible. So this video basically was me just laying out the plans. If you guys wanna look at the actual parts real quick and what everything looks like, why don't we go ahead and do that? So here's just a bit closer look at what we got. I mean, there is our curved cone setup and we've got two obviously. And then we've got our Echo Machine booster inside its adapter. And then that is what this looks like. 
So basically, you know, imagine that inside there and that is how uh, the ratio goes. And depending on the setup, of course, uh, the, it'll either be closer or further apart. Now in this series, we'll also be using standard silencer co style pistons. This is a 10 point normal housing for such things. And then in the future videos, we'll be looking at this guy, which has these very neat CGS pistons, but that's a topic for another day. So that wraps up my plans, guys. We'll be obviously shooting these on pistols, being their boosters, right? And of course, I'll be using 150 grain Syntec, like I always do, and that'll cover our subsonic. And then uh, we'll be using just regular 115 grain Remington uh, as our supers and comparing the two. So that is basically what we got, something like that or something like this. So you can see we do have decent room there still. Oh, and obviously the type of cone and the, and the shape of the cone is really going to be dependent on this as well. Uh, I don't know that I would recommend doing this with something like, um, like a 60. Might be able to do it with like a 50 or a 40, uh, a regular radial, but I don't know that a 60 is going to have a um, sharp enough angle to keep that gap there. Of course, you at home, it's going to be trial and error. It's also going to depend on just how wide uh, the tip of the cone is, too, that you're using. So, um, But if you are in that kind of situation and the tip isn't too wide, um, you could probably always go flush as well. That assumes that there is a net benefit here burying the first cone, which we don't quite know yet, obviously. <laughs> Um, who knows, you know, maybe we'll find out the way we've always been doing it to be the best. And, uh, yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, hopefully you guys are as enthusiastic as I am about it, as I really have put quite a bit of effort into this one. So, all right, fellas. Well, we'll see you next time.